Hello, sociology scholars. Mrs. Olson here. Today's lesson is titled Theoretical Perspectives on Discrimination, and it falls within our unit called Inequalities of Race and Ethnicity. Our learning target reads that you will be able to understand how functionalism, conflict theory, and symbolic interactionism explain prejudice and discrimination. So here we go with the first slide where I want to give you a little bit of background on the theoretical perspectives of discrimination. Okay, so the first note reads that psychologists who often work together with sociologists um, and and also that sociology and psychology can mesh the two the two perspectives the two genres of study can uh, work together to understand the world and people psychologists try to explain prejudice and discrimination by looking at the mental states of individuals so um, one of the big differences with psychology and sociology is that psychologists look at people's attitudes, behaviors, um, decisions from the individual lens, and sociologists look at people's attitudes, behaviors, and decisions from a group lens. So this note reads that sociologists are more interested in how societies foster uh, development of these attitudes and practices. So we're talking again about discrimination. Okay, and the three main theoretical perspectives of sociology, they help us to understand some of these issues of prejudice and discrimination. So we're going to get into those in just a moment. I have chosen this political cartoon to provide, um, I guess, a graphic representation of prejudice and discrimination. So I'm going to read the text that is in the political cartoon in case you have trouble reading it in this video. Um, so we have people here on a conveyor belt and this arm is holding a sign that says totally not toxic. This one also holds another sign that says totally not toxic. And this one has a sign around her neck reading toxic. So if you want to pause the video and look at this a little bit more or a little bit longer, go ahead. You want to be making connections with the message of the cartoon and how this is going to connect to prejudice and discrimination. Okay, our first slide is going to deal with the functionalist perspective. And the functionalists view, they focus on prejudice and discrimination by looking at the functional and dysfunctional aspects of both of these, prejudice and discrimination. So, try to take an unbiased view when learning about these perspectives because this is what they are. They are perspectives. They are a way of looking at things. So the functionalists look at the benefit of fostering prejudice. Once again, try to look at this with an unbiased view and look at it from their point of view. With the idea of fostering prejudice within a group, the dominant group can create a feeling of superiority over minority group. And what this does is that it strengthens its members' own self-concepts. So within a group, you can feel a camaraderie, you can feel a sense of community, by having these feelings of superiority. That's what the functionalists are saying. Okay, and so we have a graphic to represent that idea. Now, they did an interesting study, the functionalists, some researchers. They organized groups of boys at a summer camp into two different groups and with 
at this summer camp, they did things to create competition. So whether that was um, sports or some other type of activity, they did things to organize the kids where they would be competing against each other. Okay, this note reads that within days, the groups developed a strong sense of group identity. So that is one of the, um, the positives that come out of, um, one second, I'm going to go back here. That is one of the functional aspects of prejudice. Okay, I'm going to, um, uh, I guess, uh, strike out my word positive and replace that with functional. So that would be considered a functional aspect of prejudice. Here we go again. Um, developed a strong sense of group identity, complete with strong views of members of their group. So they had positive views of people that were within their own group, but they also developed negative attitudes toward members of the other group. Okay, so more stuff on these guys. Oh, pictures to give you an idea of kids at summer camp um, competing against one another. So the adoption of those negative feelings, they overcame positive feelings that the boys had felt before they were organized into these two groups. The friends that were placed in different groups abandoned their friendships. They actually called each other names that their new group mates applied to members of the other groups. And a lot of times they were not positive names. They were names that could be um, derogatory and obviously then separated the two groups. Okay, so let's look at this from a non-research um, point of view still talking about the functionalist perspective. This note reads that when minorities are exploited or oppressed, the social, political, educational, and economic costs to society are extremely high. Think about it from an educational standpoint. By denying members of a minority group um, educational opportunities, so whether that is the um, the type of education that they get, the quality of education, or just educational opportunities. That means that if that minority group does not get those educational opportunities, then society cannot fully benefit from what they could become because of them being educated or um, benefiting from those educational opportunities. Okay, and the last note reads that sta safety and stability of the larger society are at risk because violence periodically erupts between the two groups. So take a minute to think about that and how it applies to the world that we live in today. Moving on to the second perspective, it is the conflict perspective. And the first note reads that a majority, so think about the majority group, a majority uses prejudice and discrimination as weapons of power to control a majority. I'll give you an example here in a minute. A majority does this to increase its control over property, goods, and other resources. Power, money, and control are always connected to property, goods, and resources. So um, the example is a historical one, but you could probably think of and connect modern examples to these ideas in that Stereotypes were used by colonists to portray Native Americans. They were looked at as being um, savages, inhuman, um, not capable of learning. Um, their way of thinking, their way of life was not up to the standards of the European colonists. Therefore, they weren't worthy of, um, of being respected. Different minorities tend to view one another as competitors 
rather than as allies in their struggle against the majority. So take this historical um, example in that African Americans and Latinos conflict increased in the 1950s as whites left the city. So what we had was this, um, the building up of the suburbs in the 1950s, and white Americans were the ones that were leaving in droves to go out to uh, suburbia. And so that left um, minorities in the cities. Now, one of the one of the effects of this is that African Americans were able to assume political power. Now, where does the conflict come in? Conflict comes in because many African Americans saw Latinos as those who didn't participate in the civil rights movement, but they benefited from the civil rights movement. And many Latinos believed that African Americans used their newfound political clout, think of this as power, to push an agenda that favored their own community, African Americans, at the expense of others. So once again, we're looking at prejudice and discrimination from the conflict perspective, okay? And we are getting to the last perspective, which is called the symbolic interactionist perspective, okay? So if there was a definition for it or a summary of it, it would be in this note, in that members of a society learn to be prejudiced in much the same way they learn to be patriotic. So researcher Gordon Allport described two stages in learning prejudice. The first stage is a pre-generalized learning period where children may overhear parents making racist or prejudiced statements. Now, they haven't learned to separate people by race or ethnic group, but just being around um, their parent persons who are inf um, influential in their development and in their thinking, their view of the world, um, they th that attitude, those racist attitudes that they are hearing from their parents, it gets filed away in their memories. So even though they haven't learned how to apply those prejudiced uh, statements to other people, the, it's still sticking in their heads and it becomes part of their thinking. So Allport's second um, stage in learning prejudice is... You don't have any more. There we go. The total rejection stage, which he said that children are able to use physical clues to begin sorting people into groups. So if they hear their parents repeatedly disrespect a minority, they will then reject all members of that group um, in all different kinds of situations. And here is a political cartoon to reinforce those ideas that Allport came up with and learning how to discriminate and have um, prejudiced attitudes. Symbolic interactionists also point out that language itself can reflect prejudices. An example could be just the use of the word black, as in black mail, black list, black mark, all include a negative slant associated with the word black. Okay. And coming to the end here, we're going to um, talk about the self-fulfilling prophecy, which says that there's an expectation that leads to behavior. And that causes the expectation to become a reality. Example, if members of a minority group are continually treated as if they are less intelligent or less competent, they may eventually accept this limitation. If you are constantly told this, if nobody teaches you any differently, if you are constantly oppressed, 
you may just become accepting of this um, oppression. So it says that this may lead them to place less emphasis on education as a path to success. So think about it this way. If a student is told that she is capable of succeeding, she's likely to believe the message and her attitude, behaviors, and decisions will help her to succeed. If she is discouraged from trying she will, um, and told she will probably fail, that same student will likely believe the message and act in a manner that will cause her to fail. Now, take this um, formula, that's the word I'm trying to find, negative interaction coupled with lack of opportunity can result in a person being locked in poverty and low level jobs. If somebody is constantly told that they can't succeed, that there are not opportunities for them, they may eventually believe that and stay in that lane, if you will. Okay, so this brings us to the end of theoretical perspectives on discrimination. There it is. Theoretical perspectives on discrimination to give us three different ways in which to learn and then understand how um, prejudice and discrimination are instilled in the fabric of our society. Please let me know if you have any questions by sending a message through the inbox.